The Wear OS rebirth seems to be a fact in 2023 and Xiaomi joined the party with their Pro 2 model. Access to thousands of apps, decent health tracking and good battery life. But is this enough? Let's inspect! Hey everybody, great to meet you on the channel. I'm the Tech Mishka and Xiaomi have just joined the Wear OS crowd with a smartwatch utilizing the latest Snapdragon wearable. A fairly large battery specifications which sound very promising and a price which is considerably lower than what Samsung charge you for their Galaxy Watch series. Meaning that they seem to have chosen the right kind of ingredients for a very successful wearable device. And as usual, my job here today is to thoroughly inspect everything, expose all the strong and weak sides and figure out whether what Xiaomi promise is really close to the real life performance. Starting at €270 Euro, or close to $300, the price goes as high as €329 for the LTE-enabled variation, which right now makes it the most accessible Wear OS 2023 smartwatch with Qualcomm's latest system on a chip. The TicWatch Pro 5, Google Pixel 2 and Galaxy Watch 6 series are the direct competitors, and it's gonna be fun choosing the right one. That boxing feels good, you get a pack similar to Pro 1 series, and that's quite a standard package. It doesn't really stand out when you compare it to the mentioned alternatives. The watch looks kind of big and thick. Three buttons in total, with the right one acting as a rotating crown. The health tracking sensors are at the bottom, a quick release trap, Xiaomi stick to the classics, rather conservative design, the bezel is higher than the glass, probably in order to act as a protection layer, the design has kept some of the shapes of their previous Pro Series watches, but kind of feels boring. The screen to body ratio is also unimpressive, but might be that here the goal is to make the watch look durable. If you care about the specifications, then nothing short of impressive. A 1.43 inch AMOLED display, Qualcomm Snapdragon W5 Plus Generation 1 platform, 2GB of RAM, 32GB of storage, a close to 500mAh battery, Bluetooth 5.2, LTE connectivity as an option, speaker, microphone, weight of around 55 grams without the strap, and the watch comes out of the box with Wear OS 3.5. Looking at the design, I'm pretty happy with what I see. Still cannot speak of durability because it's only time which can show us in the long run whether a smartwatch is durable or not. Based on the specifications, there are a few things to highlight already. As a starter, it's a bit thicker than some other watches in this niche and feels kind of heavier on the wrist. It's a feeling that you either like or not, but I was just okay sleeping with it and probably if you don't feel comfortable, it's just a matter of getting used to. The display is also quite nice, it's an AMOLED display, peak brightness is 600 nits, which compared to the Galaxy Watch 6 series peaking at 2000 nits sounds like a big difference and luckily the Galaxy Watch series displays are not three times brighter than this body. Probably Xiaomi have opted for such kind of display in order to provide extended battery life. Now it's time to dive with a thorough testing of all the sensors, the tracking, First, I actually want to show you everything about the software, these three pretty nice buttons and the user interface. The main button happens to be the rotating crown, it's the biggest and the most functional part of the watch. Acts as a home button and app launcher and it's very easy to scroll with it. When I used the watch for the first time, there was no haptic feedback while you're scrolling, but a firmware update has just enabled this feature and now it feels very natural. Press it twice and it opens the reasons menu, press and hold and Google Assistant is gonna show up. The top button is configurable according to what you need, I've kept the default one bringing me to the workouts. The bottom one calls the previous app being used and if you press and hold it, it's gonna open the systems menu. It feels like Xiaomi have integrated a little bit of the navigation's best practices from Samsung Galaxy series, the TicWatch series and Garmin Venue all together. Coming from another smartwatch, I found it very easy to get used to this kind of navigation. Furthermore, now being back to the Amazfit Cheetah as a daily driver, I tend to miss the third button. Interface is smooth, responsive, beautifully designed. Swipe down and you're going to read the notifications and of course you can respond by typing or using any of the ready answers or by choosing an emoji. Swipe up for the quick toggles and swiping left and right from the watch face is going to show you the main cards. 
Now, the amount of apps is just fine in my opinion. Luckily, unlike other MIUI editions, this Wear OS edit doesn't come with bloatware, unless you count the health tracking apps being such, but I don't. Agenda, Alarm and Similar are self-explanatory, there's a remote camera app, and hey, look, Samsung are no longer the only brand supporting remote viewing of the camera. If you want to take a look at the health features, heart rate is quite detailed and yes, you can enable high and low HR alarms. You can see the sleep tracking results, which are good, but not as accurate as I hoped for. SpO2 is also being tracked, stress, even temperature. There's a pretty long disclaimer basically telling you that this app is not intended to have medical grade accuracy. The sensor's accuracy is rather on the good side. You could also use third-party Bluetooth sensors, but it looks like at the moment the Workouts ecosystem by Xiaomi doesn't really support it, so you can use Google Fit for that purpose, it's gonna work just fine. Since Google Play is present, there are a bunch of apps that you can install additionally, such for navigation, like Google Maps or Waze, such for hardware information to show you all the little details about what is inside, and a bunch of multimedia and fun, such as Spotify and many others. Over here, I have the LTE edition of the watch, so using it as an alternative to having a second phone in the pocket is an advantage. Good coverage, and it utilizes eSIM for the purpose. The battery life in this mode, with all the health tracking features on, is about day with always on display and around two days if AOD is off. In Bluetooth only mode, I was getting two to three days depending on the screen on time, and these are fairly good achievements for a Wear OS device. Even if you disable health tracking, location services and others, this wouldn't improve the situation that much. But it's the world of Wear OS these days, you know. If you wonder about the inbuilt speaker quality, here's how it feels. Included data megabytes are 976 billion 562 million 484,776.75. Now, how about switching to the smartphone companion app? Well, we're exploring the watch faces, shall we? Xiaomi Fitness is available for both Android and iOS, but this watch strictly supports Android smartphones only. The app has a pleasing to the eye user interface, a bunch of good functions allowing you to configure the watch in many ways, and I really like the fact it is one stop to have it all. No matter health tracking, such as HR data or sleep tracking, very detailed by the way, or the workout records, or the watch face adjustments, or the configuration settings, it is all at one single place and there is no need to install extra plugins or so, unlike what you're supposed to do with a Galaxy smartwatch for instance. Drilling down to the workout details shows that there's a whole lot of data available and we get the confirmation that GPS accuracy is on the good side. Yeah, with Watch 2 Pro we have the so-called GNSS implementation which relies on various satellite positioning standards. Since I just mentioned watch faces, the defaults brought by Xiaomi are fairly good, they're free of charge and customizable, you can of course get your favorites from Play Store, there are some completely free, some freemium and of course a lot of them which are paid. You can use solutions like the app Facer, which yeah, although not perfect, has a huge collection of good watch faces. If you want to discover something that is not present with the smartphone app, well, Google Fit and Strava both are, don't worry about it. It's the fact that there is no integration of a file manager, meaning that copying music, photos or other kinds of files to the watch is a bit of a struggle, unless you're familiar with how file explorers work. I'll link a thread about this in the video description area, and since we already talk about the drawbacks, I think the bezel around the display is kind of too big, and the lack of an external tracker integration with Xiaomi's fitness apps, at least in the early days after the release of the watch, is worth mentioning. Being Xiaomi's first Wear OS device, I'm pretty happy with everything I've discovered about S2 Pro, both in terms of software and hardware, and although it doesn't shine with something too unique, it's a very solid pack and something I'm absolutely sure that the Xiaomi community is going to very highly appreciate. On top of that, this happens to be the most affordable 2023 smartwatch supporting LTE, although limited to certain countries. And it's very nice to see that Xiaomi have kept the same feeling and user experience from the S1 Pro in the S1 series, 
which have been built around a totally different platform. Well, that's everything I wanted to share with you in regards to the S2 Pro. Now, I can't wait to see all your opinions that you might share in the comment section right below the video. As usual, more information about the product, link to order it, some ways to support the channel are placed in the video description area. Thanks a lot for watching. I'm Michael and look forward to seeing you in the next episode. Bye.